Hello guys, this is a other episode of Serverless Zero to Hero. I hope you guys have done a practical what we have done on the previous videos and you are ready for the next episode, right? So if you're not subscribed yet, I think by now you should feel that I must subscribe to this channel. Yes, you're right. You must subscribe. And also, not only that, you need to bring your friends and colleagues who are interested in this type of content to, content to this channel as well. So share the channel and share these videos as well as follow me on Instagram and uh, Facebook page. So I'll put the link below so that we can stay in touch and I can help you by answering your questions whenever I have time. Okay. So, so far, we learned about the API Gateway, we learned about Lambda, and we learned how to connect those two. Keep in mind, I just did those videos, you to give a kind of a feel or kind of a picture about what are those, right? So those are, we are, those are separate topic for few videos each, we go deeper and deeper, right? So this week, we release uh, three videos consecutively, and with this video, you get four videos, right? So this video, I'm going to explain you use cases, what we have for serverless framework, and also tools and um, frameworks we can use for serverless uh, journey. Okay, so let's go for use cases. Pretty much any system is capable to implement using serverless, right? So remember, we learn microservices in detail, right? So I, I have a separate uh, playlist for microservice theories and I have a separate playlist to micro, microservice practical, right? So microservice is an architecture, right? So that architecture we can implement using serverless. So that means any candidate which for microservice eventually become a candidate for serverless as well, right? However, there might be cases serverless doesn't fit. But let's see what fit for serverless. For example, if you're implementing a backend for web, mobile, or uh, IoT, or any other devices or something like that, then serverless would be really nice use case for that, right? So you can implement all your services on a serverless, uh, using serverless functions, and then you can use the API gateway to expose those functions outside, and then your mobile or a web or any other IoT device or such clients can invoke your endpoints through API gateway and uh, get the function work which implemented using serverless framework, right? So serverless framework can integrate with bunch of other uh, cloud functions you have, for example, SNS for notification, SES for email, right? SQS for queue. Is three bucket right so not only that kinesis and athena all those whatever you have in hundreds of functions you have in aws you can use with serverless right so serverless is a technology so aws is a one provider for that not the only provider but the one provider you have a google right so google can do the same thing google functions and uh, google cloud have same features and then you have a Microsoft Azure right each cloud has all this serverless implementation right but here we are talking about AWS right so one use case is a backend so other use case might be if you want to process some um, high throughput or uh, fast streaming data or something like that let's say you are uh, some IoT devices or your Bluetooth devices or your wearable like pumping the data Right, and then you can use a Kinesis or uh, Firehose or something to get those data and uh, store in uh, DynamoDB, and then you can use uh, step functions uh, with uh, Lambda to process those. Right, so you can uh, use this for such uh, use case as well. And also, let's say the other use case might be, let's say your um, client or your application need to upload some images or some uh, documents or something, right? Let's say images, right? So you need to, when the, when the user upload the images, you need to create thumbnails that you can use uh, serverless because what you can do is you can let users to, or your applications to upload the images to S3 bucket and you can use serverless, you can trigger your serverless function through the S3 uh, S3 put 
and whenever user up put a file onto the S3 bucket, it will trigger the servers sleeping worker. It will trigger the servers and servers will take the file and resize and create a thumbnail, right? So you can find hundreds of use cases, maybe thousands of use cases to implement servers, right? So this is something uh, really good to learn and really worth to learn. So now what we did is we created the server, uh, Lambda function using console and we created API gateway, we configured the API gateway using console right but that is not how we do because that's a really painful process it's not convenient right so we have a bunch of frameworks and tools to get these things done right so one is what aws provide is a sam aws sam right serverless application model so what sam does is aw has full-fledged uh, framework called cloud formation so cloud formation is a uh, framework or you can say language is a template based uh, configuration so you can use that to uh, configure your entire aws cloud right so aws sam is a mini version of cloud formation right so what sam does is sam has a template base you can use a template to configure your uh, serverless uh, functions and the api gateways and everything so internally it will convert the SAM script, SAM templates into cloud formations. And end of the day, it will go as a cloud formation, right? But it's not much popular, AWS SAM. I don't know why, but it's not much popular. So there's a very popular open source framework called serverless, right? So keep in mind, this serverless is not the serverless architecture. Right? So remember, one time we had this before, right? So Docker is a technology, Docker in is a company, right? So same thing, serverless is a technology, serverless Inc. is a company which produces an open source tool called serverless, right? So serverless framework is an open source, very popular tool, very popular framework to uh, write serverless project, right? Um, this you can it's also template based but this template is a little more convenient and I would say popular than the SAM templates right but it's again um, your preference we are going to learn both so you can choose one right so how serverless framework works you write your template so this is your function this is the uh, triggering point is API gateway so these are the headers I'm expecting these are the bodies this is our authentication handle to the uh, function and uh, these are the dependencies and so on and so forth you everything configured in a template file so when you deploy this template will uh, create all those things roles permission and everything on the cloud you don't have to do any single thing you just need to push it I mean you need, just need to push through the serverless framework it will do the all the jobs for you you even don't need to touch the console right so that means the only one and time you touch and work on the console is just when you try out things and when you just just learning things in a real aws project you don't work with the uh, console at all 95 percent time right but sometimes you need to go to console but 95 percent time functionality you don't need to go to console so now we talk about SAM and we talk about serverless, right? Again, we are going to learn those details, right? How to work with those. In fact, this course is using serverless framework so for everything. So you get hands on as well. And when it comes to CI/CD, continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. So in a microservice video, we use Ansible and Nginx and framework to build our CI/CD stack, right? So when you push something to the uh, JIT so it will automatically pull it and it will build the dockers and deploy the dockers right if you don't remember that you have that video in my microservice practical playlist so when it comes to AWS AWS also provides bunch of tools to get this CICD into real right for example you can use JIT if you want right GitHub or Bitbucket or anything if you want or else you have AWS code commit which is a JIT based um, uh, code uh, management platform which is unique to AWS which is powered by AWS it's still 
all the identical same JIT commands and everything. So it's a JIT based, so but it's on the AWS base. So as I remember in the free tier also, you can create a lot of pri unlimited private repositories if I'm not mistaken, but just go and double check uh, before you create. Right, that's a code commit to hold your codes. Then you have AWS code build if you want to build your code, right? So especially in the serverless framework, we are going to use this. And also you have a AWS code pipeline to deploy your codes uh, to um, the deployment architecture you want to deploy. But with the serverless, you don't need to use that much because there is no real deployment right in a uh, serverless because uh, we learn uh, no deployment at all sometimes so i mean there is deployment but we can use that through the code build as well right so we'll see uh, when we go into the real practical so why this is important with the serverless is this so according to serverless framework that open source framework we discussed it need administrator role to deploy the uh, your code Right. So let's say you write your code on a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft code or Visual code, Visual Studio code, right? That's ID. So let's say you write the code on a Visual Studio code and then uh, you, when you deploy that, so that deployment expecting AWS administrative role, right? But in a real project, as an architect, I won't give administrative role for everyone in my project, right? Because then, then my cloud is in a very risk. So I don't want to give the administrative privileges to developers. So what I can do, I can create CI/CD pipeline with the administrative privileges. So when the developers push their code into develop branch, so this pipeline will take the code and deploy into um, the uh, Lambda functions, deploy the Lambda functions, create the uh, resources, API gateways, domain mapping, 50, route 53 records and everything right so that means in that case you don't have to give those privileges to developers you can put those privileges on a CI/CD pipeline so if you use serverless framework so this one this um, CI/CD is something you must uh, follow right don't worry again that we are going to cover so this week we learned for we I gave you four videos right so in next week we have some exciting work to do uh, put all those things together and kind of a start real use case. Okay, so next week we are going to learn Lambda API gateway and also I don't think DynamoDB I can cover in the next week in detail not not like just what we learn in detail about the Lambda and API gateway, right? So and uh, then in the pipeline we have a DynamoDB also DynamoDB DynamoDB streams and do real project so many things to do so uh, from your side, what you need to do is subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends on your social media, like, comment, uh, see, tell me what you're feeling about this course and what need to change or something. But I have uh, recorded a bunch of videos already, but if you have any feedback, I can incorporate to um, other pending videos as well. So next week could be exciting week, plus in this week, you will get some more videos because I told you, right? Not only these courses, I have some other exciting things to share with you. So you will get more videos, but it, this course will continue from next week again. So get ready, do practice, practice make perfect. Then stay safe, take care, make sure you subscribe and follow me on link, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Stay safe, take care.